Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we are going to show you how to model loads and load combinations in RAM Elements Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to be focusing on modeling area loads in RAM Elements. In RAM Elements, areas are used to distribute uniform surface loads to enclosed members, beams, and girders. The areas are used only to distribute load to the enclosing members and do not provide any additional bracing or composite properties to the model. We are now going to turn our attention back to our sample model, where we're going to use areas at the roof elevation in order to model our gravity dead load. The first thing we're going to do is go down to the status bar and make sure the dead load case is currently selected. Next, we're going to take a look at our roof plan. To do this particular exercise, it would be easiest to identify the members that will create the closed loops for our areas and isolate them in the view. So I'm going to start by right clicking in the display area and select the front elevation, which is the front XY view. Next, I'm going to draw a fence around all of the members that make up the roof structure. For this exercise, I'm going to turn off everything that's not currently selected. So I'm going to come up to my selection tools, which are available in the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon or the home tab and say hide unselected elements. Finally, I'm going to view a top elevation where each of these areas is going to represent an area that I'm going to use to distribute some surface loads. Now surface loads can only be applied in one step when they all lie within the same plane. My roof elevation is sloping in two different directions, so I'm going to select half of it at one time. So I'm going to draw a fence around the left half of this roof system. Next, I'm going to go in the Data Panel, select the Areas tab with this first icon selected, which is the Nodes tab. When these two areas are selected, I can go up to my Active Spreadsheet Tools, which has several different options available. Here, I'm going to select the option to define the load spanning in the X direction. Now, if I'm not sure which direction I should be spanning at, I could go ahead and look at the Global Axis Perspective in the lower right hand corner of the display area. So I'm going to select this first icon up here which is basically going to create my areas. I'm going to repeat this process for the right hand side of this roof. And you can see now that I've created my areas for this system. Next let's go ahead and select the next icon which will be the description index spanning area. Now I already told the program because I use that particular tool that I'm spanning in the X direction. Now you can change the direction that you're spanning by modifying your vectors here and you can also select a bi-directional deck by clicking on this checkbox here if you need to change that after you create your areas. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and specify the pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and click this third icon here. This is my surface load icon. Now areas can be used to distribute surface loads to your supporting members. The areas don't provide any additional stiffness to the structure or any type of composite properties. They're just used to distribute loads to make it a little easier for your modeling process. So here what we're going to do is we're going to enter in the pressure of our load. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's 0 0.02 kips per square foot and this is a dead load. I'm going to enter that for the first selected area and then I'm going to go ahead and click on this icon here available in the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon to fill the current column with the value at the cursor location. Which will basically copy that cell and copy it down to all of the currently selected areas. Now so far I've just modified the pressure and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tell the program what direction this load is going to be in. I'm going to say it's a tributary load acting downwards in the negative y direction. To do that, I could modify the modifiers over here or just click distribute load downward and negative y. You can see it's going to give a negative 1 to all of those modifiers within that pressure. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the 3D view of the structure. Now at this point, I've modified, I've created my areas, I've specified the pressure, 
Now what I want to do is I'm going to tell the program to go ahead and distribute this load to the tributary members. So we know the spanning direction and the pressure. I'm going to click distribute load areas to tributary members and then it's going to go ahead and distribute that load for me. Now if I wanted to see the magnitude of basically each member load that was created through that process, I can go to the view tab in the ribbon. I can see the loads icons already active, but if I use the pull down menu, I can go ahead and say show values. And that's just another way where you can double check what's happening with your structure or how those loads were distributed. Now once we're done, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything back on. So I'm going to go to the home tab in the ribbon and I'm just going to unselect this hide unselected elements icon which will bring all of my structure back to me. At this point, this concludes the process for modeling areas in RAM elements and specifying the loads so that they get distributed properly to the supporting members. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.